the year is 2022. This year, for some, was the golden age of anime, especially thanks to the adaptation of Chainsaw Man and the return of one of my personal favorite anime, Bleach, especially after being gone for so many ages. However, the year 2023 is coming, and it won't give up the title of the year of anime that easily, especially with the juggernauts being released so soon, including, but not exclusive to, Tomo-chan is a girl, Spy Classroom, and the Ice Blade Sorcerer shall rule the world, some of which we mentioned in previous videos, so be free to check them out. That is why for today we will be talking about the top, most anticipated anime of 2023. So, before we begin, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below about the anime that you are most hyped for. And without further ado, let's start. Coming in at number 12 is Vinland Saga Season 2. After the anticlimactic way things ended off in Season 1 with the death of Askeladd that no one saw coming, Thorfinn ended up being sold off as a slave to a farm owner called Katil. Thorfinn, however, is no longer the same man we met in Season 1. His bloodlust is no longer there and he is now on the path to atonement for the sins he committed and the people he's killed and destroyed. Thorfinn now is a shell of his past self and if you are expecting to see him fighting and killing like before, then I am sorry to burst your expectations and bubble. The death of Askeladd at the hands of Kanut devastated Thorfinn and left a hole in his heart. When pulling him off his dead body, Thorfinn also dropped his father's dagger. This is significant in many ways. This marked the end of a chapter in the life of Thorfinn. No more vengeance, no more rage, no more hate, anger, none of it. Now it was time for him to move on and truly discover what kind of man he wants to be. Coming in at number 11 is Dr. Stone, New World. With the war finally over, it is time for a new age to start. The Age of Exploration, the nation of science for their goal now, is to go to the other side of the world to the origin of the ray that petrified humanity in hopes of finding answers and discovering what caused this cataclysm. To do so, they will need to sail the ocean and will require a ship. What is more important than a ship, however, is the one who will sail it. Enter Ryusui, the greatest captain of the modern world, cause simply he is the only one there. In the few moments he revived from his petrification, he started a new age of commerce in the nation of science, introducing money to the mix backing it by the oil field Senku promised him. There's just one eensy weensy tiny little problem though. It's been 3,700 years since, and the geography has changed drastically, meaning all their maps are now useless and obsolete. The only way to fix this issue is by updating those maps through soaring in the air. The nation of science will conquer the air and the sea in this season with the help of their genius captain. Let's hope this season lives up to its expectations. Coming in at number 10 is Attack on Titan The Final Season Part 3. This was a very long journey, a beautiful one too. However, just like every journey, it has reached its end. The stakes are the highest ever and the rumbling is erasing all humanity outside the walls. Especially Marley. They will taste the same pain they had the people of Paradise endure all these years. Exiling them, trapping them in the walls and setting the Titans on them all this they are going to pay for. Eren in this founder Titan form is attacking Marley and setting all the Titans to destroy the world. Those who read the manga already know that 80% of humanity was wiped out by Eren and the rumbling. The final battle is drawing near, and as a manga reader myself, the ending for me was a bittersweet one that was suitable for such a series. Personally, I can't wait for this final part of the saga to be animated, and I hope you guys are too. Coming in at number 9 is Goblin Slayer Season 2. So far we know nothing about the story of the second season and the events that will transpire. After all, the first season mixed up a couple of events from the manga like how the studio placed the Goblin Lord arc in the end and before it the Sword Maiden arc, when in the manga it was the complete opposite. The Goblin Lord arc came before the Sword Maiden one. Season 2 is taking place after the movie events, so if I am not wrong, they don't mix up the manga panels again. The next story arc will be the Mage Young Man arc, the one with the personal vendetta against the goblins. I bet he will make great friends with Goblin Slayer. As expected of any Season 2 anime, it has to up its game and go beyond what anyone expects from it. This season will bring even more action, killing, and fighting to the table. The goblins won't know what hit them and whether they have a shaman on their side or a goblin's lord even. They still won't have a chance against Goblin Slayer and his party. Coming in at number 8 is Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World, Season 3. It has been 6 years since Season 2 aired and finally we received news that Season 3 is returning after a long time of being gone. Kazuma and his ragtag team are back to cause even more mischief. With the useless goddess, mini terrorist mage, and the masochistic knight, we are guaranteed to experience the same fun we had in season 1 and 2, as well as the movies. 
they are back, and I can't wait for them to engage in all kinds of trouble and mischievous fun. Coming on number 7 is Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. This upcoming season will be quite an interesting one to say the least. Manga readers know exactly what I am talking about. This season will be adapting from the manga, The Past of Gojo, as well as the Shibuya incident with Goto, attempting to seal Gojo. Of course, I won't spoil anything further for you guys, I was just giving you something to look up to in the season. The sorcerers are back to engage in battles that you would only see in your wildest dreams, with their lives and many others on the line. One final spoiler about the season is, it won't hold back at all. It's going to be one hell of a savage season. Coming at number 6 is Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Swordsmith Village Arc. The Swordsmith arcs take place right after the Entertainment District arc, with Tanjiro and Uzui defeating the siblings and the only casualty being Tanjiro's sword. He is now sent off to the Swordsmith Village in order to fix his broken blade and train as well. This arc is mostly a training arc however, so don't be discouraged. It also has its fair share of action thanks to the fact that a horde of demons attack the village and even the Upper Moon 5th and Upper Moon 4th show up in this arc. If the two Hashiras weren't there, then the village would have probably been overrun and destroyed already. The battle for the protection of the Swordsmith Village is about to begin. A climactic battle in a training arc that will lead to the final and last battle arc with the Upper Moon 1 and even with Muzin himself. This arc can be seen as a breath of fresh air before the true fun begins and the real battle commences. Coming in number 5 is Mushoku Tensei, Shabbos Reincarnation Season 2. The journey of Rudius searching for his family members continues. Thanks to the cataclysm that tore him from his beloved family, now Rudius is looking for them everywhere while adventuring with the party of a hunter named Sara. At first she treated him like dirt, thinking he was just another spoiled noble playing adventurer. However, after he proved himself on many occasions, she accepts him in the party and treats him better than before. Rudius right now is depressed and not in a very good place mentally speaking. He had his first sexual experience and one of his worst. He has no idea where his family is and he has no clue what to do next. This arc will be a means for Rudius to accept the facts that some things are just out of his control and that he needs to accept the reality of the world, learn to adapt and overcome it. Coming in number 4 is Classroom of the Elite Season 3. Classroom of the Elite concluded Season 2 with a massive cliffhanger, showing the recently introduced character Arisu Sakayanagi against Kiyotaka up front. Not only that, but we were also dealt a punch in the guts with the fact that she knew the relation of Ayana Koji to the White Room and all about his dark past. Just like that, things ended and with Season 3 on the way to continue the story and complete Classroom of the Elite year, one, story fans are bound to get some answers for their many, many asked questions. As far as we know, with the anime being loyal to the light novel chapters, this season will be about the mixed training camp. A new special test for the students of ANHS, which is presumed to be more mind-bending. Moreover, by looking at the finale's cliffhanger, it can be expected that Arisu Sakayanagi will play a crucial role in the upcoming season. She did start a war, after all. Coming in number 3 is One Punch Man Season 3. The destructive right hook of Saitama is finally back after the announcement of a third season to come in 2023. The fans all over the world are excited for the return of Saitama, Genos, and the rising anti-hero hero hunter, Garu. The third season took a while, but the wait is actually worth it, with it finally gracing our screen soon. The series will be concentrated in this season on the two major powers, the S-Class Heroes and the Heroes Association, and the Monster Association. Garu and Saitama's battle is soon to take place, but many events need to take place before such a battle happens, and many mysteries must unravel. Coming in number two is Mashal. Welcome and hello everyone. I would like to introduce you to the son of Asta in Harry Potter. I mean, literally. He has the looks of Harry, he goes to a magical school, he even has the bowl cut hair. While on the side of Asta, he inherited from him his lack of magic. Just like Asta, this guy has zero mana and magic in his veins and doesn't even have a magical mark, which is something people are born with mostly in this world. Mash, however, opposed to Asta, is a very calm and collected person, even though he might be stronger than him somewhat and taller too. This is a new upcoming anime adapted from the manga with the same name, Masho, that started publishing in the year 2020. His goal is to achieve the rank of divine visionary so that people will finally accept him, even though he has no magic. And number one goes to Solo Leveling. The whole world balance is turned upside down when the phenomenon known as the Gate appeared, linking the human world with the world of mystic beings and monsters. In order to preserve the balance and order, certain individuals were granted superhuman powers, becoming what is called Hunters. Sung Jin Woon, the main character, is one of those so-called Hunters, known for being the weakest of the bunch with a power level even lower than an E rank. In short, he is the most pathetic hunter of them all. However, even though he possesses such a low power level, he fights low-tier beasts. Gates tirelessly to be able to support his sick mother and pay 
her medical bills. Those who have read the manhwa already know what goes down and how Song Jin Woon revives with the power of the Shadow Monarch. His solo leveling days are just around the corner and finally, we are going to be able to watch it and enjoy the animations, the battles, rather than just reading the manhwa panels and imagining how the battles went down. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are just as hyped as I am for the upcoming anime. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and which ones you are excited for as well. Also, don't forget to like, share, and definitely don't forget to subscribe. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.